Hello boys and girls and welcome back to the channel. I'm sure you're here because you asked yourself, could I eat raw salmon from Costco? Could I eat sashimi from Costco? And I'm here to show you that you most definitely can. So here we go. Step one, go to Costco, get yourself some salmon. All right, here we have some steelhead, which is in the salmon family. You can also get the farmed uh, Atlantic salmon. Number one, you gotta make sure that it is indeed farmed, okay? When they farm it, they feed it a special kind of feed that is free of parasites. And the way that most fish get parasites is by the things that they eat. In a farm, they feed the fish little pellets and they ensure that those pellets do not contain parasites. So it is safe to eat farmed salmon. It may not be safe to eat wild salmon. All right, so that's your first step. All right, farmed is good, wild, no good. Wild is good if you're like cooking it, but not if you're gonna eat it raw. You can see here that it says farm raised. All right, so now it's gone through the first step. Second step is you're gonna open it up and your nose will never lie, all right? You're gonna take a nice big sniff of this fish. All right, there we go. It smells really nice and clean. There's not a lot of fishy smell. It's a very mild smell, okay? If it smells very strongly of fish, then it's probably not good to eat uh, for sashimi or raw. And if it stinks, well, it's definitely not good to eat. And if you're one of those people that are like, well, I don't like fish, well, then, you know, you probably shouldn't be watching this video. You should be watching uh, how to make burgers or something. But anyways, so step number two, smell the fish. It's gotta have a very pleasant, gentle fish smell, all right? Now, step number three, you're gonna take this to the kitchen and you're gonna rinse it under cold running water. All right, we're back. So we rinse this under cold water and now you wanna take some paper towel and just dry it up. All right, so in here, there may or may not be bones. So you run your finger along it and you feel for bones. And obviously if there are bones and you wanna pull them out, okay? This one is pretty boneless and you can see that they already uh, took the bones out and they did it in a hurry. So they kind of broke the fish here, but um, here we go, there's one. You can take, you can do it with your fingers or you can use needle nose, clean needle nose pliers or you can get special tools that are specifically for deboning fish, like fish tweezers. All right, so you, you run finger along here and along here and you don't feel any bones. All right, so we've passed the first three steps. It is farmed, it smells good, and we rinsed it and took the bones out of it. Okay, now we're gonna break it up into sections so it's easier to work with because I assume that you're doing this at home and you don't necessarily want like, you know, three pounds of sashimi. So uh, normally I cut the tail section off and I may use that for sushi rolls or for making pokey, all right? For the sashimi, I want the middle parts here. So I'll cut these here and maybe I'll cut this. There we go. And by the way, you're gonna need a really sharp knife, okay? This here is a Siyosaku knife. I don't see if you can see that here. And that was given to me by a very nice Japanese man who owns this company. Okay, this is like a $400 knife and it's super sharp and it's nice and light and I like to use it. Now, if I wanted to make my life easy, I could have taken the skin off before we did this, but it's okay. So what I'll do here is make a little cut here and holding my knife kind of flat, I take the skin and I pull it. Okay, and then the skin comes off. All right, there we go. All right, so now we're gonna notice the patterns. Okay, this area obviously has a different pattern in fat than this, pat than this area here. So we're gonna separate it right there, see? This is kind of where the pattern differs. All right, so we're gonna give it a nice cut here. Put this to the side. I'm gonna flip this over and very carefully, I'm gonna cut that little fat layer there. Okay, just that gray little bit of fat. You know, just take your time and trim it.
There we go. So this is a nice little piece for sashimi. All right, and now we're gonna cut our sashimi slices. So um, are there techniques for cutting? Yes, but this is not like an advanced uh, sushi or sashimi video. This is just basically showing you how you can enjoy a nice piece of raw salmon at home from Costco. All right, but ideally you can saw something, right? You move the blade back and forth. That's not ideal for a nice clean cut. If you can do the cut in one swipe, that's the ideal thing to do, okay? So if you can take your knife and run it down like that in one swipe, then you'll notice we have a nice clean piece. Yep, there we go. I sawed that one. However you want to do this, as long as you end up with nice sashimi, like a wise man once said, it's all good, baby, baby. All right, now we're going to take it to the plate. Okay, so you want to take your salmon, put it on the plate. Okay, and from here, you literally just need like soy sauce and wasabi, but I'm going to dress it up the way I like to dress it up because I really enjoy eating sushi this way. So here's some things that I like to put on it. Okay, so I like to get my wasabi, a little bit in there. Now usually for sushi and sashimi, you don't get like the regular kikkoman soy sauce, you get the less sodium. Okay, the less sodium is the one you actually dip your fish in. And not because it's healthy, just because the other one, you know, the regular one is actually too salty. All right, so we got that. And the next thing I like to put on it is toasted sesame oil. It gives it a really, really nice flavor. Okay, just a little tiny drizzle, just like that. Okay, I like a little kick, so I'm gonna put some gochujang, which is kind of like the Korean version of sriracha. Just a little bit, like that. This here is sweet soy glaze. So you want a little line of that. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Again, these are all extras, okay? But I, I like to do this. Um, furikake is like a little, I call it shake. It's like they sell it in different flavors. This is like, um, uh, Katsuofumi, which is like smoked salmon uh, flakes. So you put those on there. And it gives it a little hint of smokiness and great flavor. And it also looks nice. And last but not least, you give it a little bit of chopped scallions or chopped green onions. The quintessential Asian garnish. And there you have it, a beautiful plate of really good tasting sashimi, straight from Costco. All right, a little background change here, because you know, Instagram eats first. But now my favorite part. All right, let's dig into this, give it a whirl. This looks delicious. Okay, get a little tiny bit of wasabi here. All right, little dip dip. Down the hatch. Oh my God, mm, wow. Now this is fantastic. I'll tell you something about steelhead. It's very similar to salmon, but it's just so fatty and it's, you know, the taste is a little more delicate or I find than salmon. It's just, wow, it's amazing. So, if you guys like sashimi, head on down to Costco. I'm not affiliated with Costco in any way. I just know that this is the only place that I can consistently get, you know, this fresh steelhead salmon and make sashimi out of it. Um, and it's just a great, great product. All right guys, until next time, bon appetit, enjoy your salmon.